Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. So in this video I'm gonna take a look at some uh, mystery box full of old PC components. I haven't really done a lot of PC related stuff on this channel. I mainly focus on 8-bit machines and the older stuff from <laughs> the 80s and 90s. Um, but I got this box. Uh, I have had it uh, lying around for yeah, a couple of years and it is full of old PC stuff. So my goal here today in this video is to check out the contents here and see what we can test out, see what we can get working and what I can throw away. This video is sponsored by PCBWay and I just want to say thanks to them for supporting my channel. As a hobbyist I often find myself in the need of some PCBs for various projects and of course PCBWay is my favorite. The PCB manufacturer. Not only do they provide prototypes PCBs for reasonable prices and with uh, quite amazing shipping times, they can also provide you with other hobbyist needs like uh, advanced PCBs, PCB assembly, SMD stencil, CNC machining and 3D printing and various other products and capabilities. Also check out their shared project site where you can find a lot of ready-made designs for PCBs. So go ahead and visit pcbway.com to check out their services. Now back to the video. I actually got a couple of old uh, motherboards and a couple of uh, yeah a little bit newer PCs uh, that I can use to test this stuff out. But uh, first let's take a look at what's inside the mystery box. Yes, and this box is really full. It's uh, all the way to the top. <laughs> I'm not really sure how I'm gonna present this. It's uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of space here. Um, I think I'm just gonna take out stuff and lay it out on my bench and we can take a look at it. The first thing here is uh, just this. I'm not really sure what it is. It's uh, yeah, it seems like parts for uh, a compact um, laptop couple other connectors um, yeah I don't know that's uh, probably serial and uh, VGA and uh, PS2 and yeah there's a battery holder there's even a battery in it on this side hmm okay here's um, a lot of uh, custom surface mounted chips let's see if I can figure out what this is FTC, that's probably floppy disk controller. A wiper, I have no clue what those are. Serious logic, that's uh, probably display chip, but I don't see anything that looks like a CPU. This looks like uh, memory chips. But on this side, there's a big um, heatsink here that's screwed in. It's probably uh, on top of some kind of chip. Maybe that's a CPU. Let me take that off yes and there we have a chip I can see it says Intel so let me try and clean that off yes here we can uh, see it's an Intel uh, PP120 uh, it says um, copyright 9293 I'm not really sure what kind of uh, chip that is. It has some kind of serial number 86430222. Okay, I'm gonna look that up. Yes, that turns out to be an Intel Mobile 120 megahertz uh, Pentium processor from Intel. So-called Intel Mobile Pentium. Well, <laughs> 
I have no idea where this came from and uh, probably this is the keyboard for the same machine. I don't think I have any other parts, but uh, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna try and hook it up, see if it uh, has some life in it. <laughs> I, I'm gambling uh, that this is a 12 volt um, supply that's needed for this. Uh, it has a regular uh, yeah, barrel connector like this and I have a, a 12 volt uh, power supply, just a regular one. Maybe it's too weak for this. And to find uh, what's uh, uh, positive and negative on this, I just measured, I uh, found that it's uh, center positive. Uh, so uh, let's just hook up this. I connected the VGA to my TV. It has a VGA input. Hope uh, that uh, nothing blows up here. There's a couple of uh, capacitors and stuff. <laughs> okay, seems like uh, nothing is happening here. Wait, wait. <laughs> it's actually counting the memory. 16 megabytes, all right. Okay, so it uh, comes with a diskette controller error. Okay, yeah, obviously there's nothing connected to this. So there isn't much I can do. Um, oh, yeah, the keyboard, uh, it seems like uh, the connector here goes into there. So yeah, just uh, try and insert that. Maybe we can enter the BIOS or something. I, I don't think I have a floppy drive that fits um, small uh, floppy drive connector. Yeah, keyboard lights up. I heard uh, some sound from the little uh, speaker there. So I tried to enter uh, BIOS by pressing delete, but it comes up with a keyboard error. And now a disk controller failure. Yeah, nothing happens. Okay, so at least the CPU and the memory is okay. And uh, yeah, display is working, but uh, I'm not gonna use any more time on this. This was probably torn apart for some reason. Um, and yeah, it might be used for spare parts sometime later. I don't know, <laughs> just gonna keep it. So here we have something completely different. Uh, yeah, look at that. That is a 486 SX motherboard. So most of the stuff in this box I actually bought um, from uh, one guy. He sold the whole lot uh, quite cheap. And yeah, I think I actually got it for free if I remember correctly. And uh, he didn't know the status of anything. And I just um, put it away for a while. And now I was suddenly interested in uh, checking it out. Yeah, this one looks to be in good order. Uh, yes, it doesn't have a battery. It has a Dallas uh, real-time clock chip there. 486SX, 16-bit uh, ESA slots here and uh, yeah, lots of RAM. No cache RAM here. Yeah, it has a keyboard connector uh, there and uh, otherwise uh, not much. And it has an uh, award BIOS. It says copyright uh, 1992. Now I must admit I don't have a lot of experience with um, old PC components and motherboards. Uh, obviously I had PCs and played around with them back in the day. I got my first PC in uh, 1991 or 92. It was a 386. Uh, however, I did for the most part just uh, play games and uh, programming and stuff like that. I didn't really do any hardware stuff. I missed out on a lot of the PC stuff. I just bought new pieces and used them and didn't mind uh, as much uh, about the details and how they were made. Well, I just think we need to hook this up. I need to find a display card. I think I have one uh, lying around that is working. See if we have some life in this. Yeah, also in the box I found this. This is a video blaster. It has uh, two VGA ports and uh, audio. So it's probably sound blaster compatible. Yes, yeah, so let's check it out then. Of course, need a power supply as well. Got one here, ATX, and just gonna hook it up. 
and we need a keyboard uh, I'm gonna wait until I see if this is working or not connector is on this side okay it's hooked up let's see now turn it on <laughs> Yeah, it's starting, all right. I can hear the fan. All right, so no signal there. Let's try the other port. Nope. Do we have any voltages here? Let's check. Yeah, there's five, five. There's 12 volts, all right. Yeah, so it got power now, but uh, no action. I just moved to another slot. I can feel a heat in the chip, so definitely there's power to the board. All right, I'm gonna try one of those post cards. This is a combined one. It's both ISA and PCI bus. So yeah, the direction, <laughs> I guess since the components are on this side on this board, probably the correct way this way. Yeah, all the voltages are good, seems like, but uh, no postcodes. Gonna try and uh, pull out all the RAMs if that makes any difference. But I think it should post even without RAM, so that might probably not help at all. Nope, there's nothing. This motherboard is dead apparently and i'm not gonna try and figure out what's wrong with it in this video the cpu runs uh, warm might be the cpu i could i think i have a 486sx lying around could try and swap it see if that helps i don't have the correct tool for pulling out the chips like these oops i just spent a <laughs> pin header there you go. Let me find the other chip. This one should be working. Um, I think I have tested it before on another working motherboard. Okay, let's test. Uh, nope, still the same. Okay, so the next thing I would um, check then is the BIOS. Um, yeah. I could just read it in uh, and see if we get any content or if the chip is damaged. This is probably a 64 kilobyte uh, chip. So I'm selecting 27C512 here. Let's try and read this. Yes, it's reading. Okay, yeah. Copyright. All rights reserved. Award Software Inc. Yeah, so this chip seems to be good. No, I can't see any damages or anything wrong with this board, so it's hard to say what's uh, wrong. Um, yeah, I don't know if this uh, Dallas uh, real-time clock chip can bring a motherboard like this down. Uh, could be other things, obviously. So I'm just gonna label this as a dead and no post. Uh, however, I am gonna test um, the CPU. Um, well, it was this one and the RAM, see if uh, that works. Um, yeah, then I take a look at this uh, motherboard sometime later. This is another motherboard that is working and it has its, its own built-in VGA um, graphics and I am inserted uh, the 486 into this. Uh, this actually had the other 486 in it from before. So this is from uh, the unknown board then and uh, has a couple of uh, RAM sticks. Um, yeah, inserted the postcard into this uh, riser card. Let's see if this boots up. Yeah, it posts. And we have stuff uh, on the screen, uh, yes. Amebios and it has uh, 7.8 megabytes of RAM. Looks a little bit strange, but uh, yes. Probably eight megabytes then. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna insert uh, the other um, RAM sticks, see if it can handle anything more. 
this board takes both uh, 30 and 72 pins uh, sim ram yes i know it went up to 12 megabytes or <laughs> thereabout so that was just four megs anyway i still got this video blaster card i haven't really checked if it's working uh, since the other board didn't work we couldn't really test it but uh gonna test it now in this one see if it uh, boots nope there's nothing on the screen however there might be some jumpers you need to set to use um, external display there is a jumper there it says uh, vga uh, enable and uh, if i move that over there see what happens then yeah then we get nothing on the screen from the built-in uh, vga adapter let's move this over yeah there's nothing from uh, that vga adapter either and uh, it actually dis uh, it didn't post it stopped at uh, 2a probably there's something wrong with this card i mean <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with everything from that uh, <laughs> old box. Oh yeah, I can feel it getting really hot around here. There's a couple of transistors. Yeah, so maybe this card is um, in the need of repair as well. However, also in the box I found this. This is another display card. It says Quadtel TVGA Trident chip and uh, yeah just a single vga output and um, let's see if this works then nah nothing doesn't post next item i found this one uh, this is a video adapter vga card and <laughs> yeah it has a label here brick and if I remember correctly, Brick was a Norwegian computer or PC manufacturer back in the day. Um, there isn't much information to find about this uh, label or this brand um, online, but uh, I distinctly remember Brick. So that's probably the BIOS chip there, but uh, what else do we have? There's a chip labeled Music. <laughs> it's a tr9c1710 something yeah music <laughs> probably nothing to do with sound or music <laughs> yeah besides that there isn't much to say it says uh, made in taiwan it has a tseng chip there let's see if this works or not i hope to find something that works yes we do it actually booted okay so maybe we should uh, hook up a keyboard here and see if we can uh, find a hard drive or something actually boot this machine see if we can run something <laughs> i found this uh, floppy disk controller card here uh, it seems like a very simple but it can take uh, yes yeah, it's uh, both floppy and uh, hard disk let's try that one see if it works and if we can boot this um, <laughs> machine gonna start with the floppy drive first we need some uh, power which i uh, have here on this power supply i really don't remember much about this uh, pc stuff uh, <laughs> fiddling <laughs> but uh, yeah it's kind of fun and this one goes in just one direction so and I have a floppy disk here, it says PC Tools for Windows 2.0. Let me see if I can find something else. Yes, here we got the uh, MS-DOS 6.22 boot disk plus utilities. Yeah, the drive spins. Uh, yeah, of course I need a keyboard as well, <laughs> just a second found this old Lenovo keyboard uh, it's dirty as uh, hell but uh, I'm gonna try that it has um, both the old style DIN connector and also a PS2 then we need to go into the BIOS press F1 to resume yeah that worked okay I'm gonna see if we need to configure a floppy 
disk drive here. Hard disk not installed, not installed. 144. Okay. I'm gonna try and hook up a hard drive afterwards. So I'm gonna start with this. Yes. Okay. Uh, drive not ready error. No, it doesn't want to boot. I hear it spins up when I hit the key, but um, I don't hear um, the drive head move, so I'm not sure about this drive. No, that drive was a drive I had from before, but this one is uh, from the mystery box, so let's hook that up instead. Well, this isn't going very well. <laughs> Second drive couldn't boot either. I actually found another controller card here and um, it tried with that but uh, didn't work with that either. Also tried the uh, cable different uh, ways but um, can't get any of those to boot so it might be the drives themselves, I don't know. But I'm gonna try and hook up a hard drive. I have one here that at least I know was working uh, last time I tested it and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, 130 megabytes. It should be installed with uh, uh, DOS. I only have this very short uh, IDE cable and uh, that's not good, but um, yeah, let's see if we can make it. Yeah, and it spins up at least, quite noisy. <laughs> so let me see, do we have any auto detect in this BIOS? No. So then we need to figure out the different uh, parameters for the drive. Heads 15 and uh, 17 sectors. Sounds kind of uh, wrong. Here 125 and it is a 130. Not really sure if this is going to be okay. Let's see if we can boot from this. Yeah. I can hear the head is ticking. Oh, obviously it tries to boot from A. Well, there is actually an auto detect hard disk. <laughs> so uh, that was a little bit different values. No, it says eight megabytes. That's not correct. So I'm trying just to select uh, one of the default uh, hard drive types here and this one looks to be the same 1115.17 and uh, let's see if we can uh, use that um, nope obviously I am uh, stupid because this <laughs> motherboard already has uh, built-in IDE and floppy disk controllers on the board as you can see here so I'm uh, not really sure um, if it's then possible to configure it to run on an external uh, hard disk controller it probably is by some jumpers then but then again I don't have any documentation for uh, this board so just gonna try and see if we can um, boot from it from the built-in uh, floppy drive controller Yes, <laughs> starting MS-DOS, obviously that was it. Well, that makes it easier to test the stuff I actually wanted to test. <laughs> Let's see if we can access A then, not ready. Now, none of the drive would work, so I'm not really sure what's about with those. They might be damaged. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna do something else now. Uh, next up, I actually found another motherboard inside the mystery box. Yeah, and this is uh, Intel uh, Socket 5 motherboard. Uh, that means uh, the Pentium processors, I think. Uh, yes, looks to be in good condition. It has both 16-bit um, ISA and uh, PCI slots. And yeah, there's even a coin cell there but no CPU, so um, hmm. not really sure if I'm able to test this. I'm gonna take a look. I have a box of some CPUs. I found this, it's a Pentium 3. I'm not really sure if it is the same socket. It looks to be same. Uh, I took it out uh, from another machine that is working and uh, yeah, seems to be the same socket, but um, 
No, even though it looks to be the same, it's not. Um, the width of the pins on the chip is uh, yeah, a couple of millimeters wider than the hole, so uh, probably some other type of socket. I'm not that familiar with all those types of uh, more modern types of sockets for uh, these kinds of uh, modern boards. So that's too bad, I can't test this then. Alright then, I just think I need to find myself a Pentium processor that can fit into this socket 5 uh, then. Because I want to test this uh, motherboard that uh, I have here, but uh, that's going to be some time later, I guess. I'm actually back to the first motherboard, the one that uh, seems to be dead. I uh, was thinking, I did test it with some random uh, video card that I'm not sure it's working. However, this one we have already tested and confirmed it is working. So I'm just going to try with that. Still doesn't show anything on the post. Wait, <laughs> look. You actually have something on the screen here. Yeah, it's counting memory. It's 20 megabytes, 25 megahertz CPU clock. Award modular BIOS for 86SX. Copyright 84 to 91. Well, it doesn't seem to have any color. Oh, that was just because the VJ plug wasn't properly in. Memory size has changed since last boot. CMOS checksum error, battery failed. Yeah, so this motherboard is in fact working. That's nice. Now I can test out those uh, hard drive and the floppy drive controller cards and see if we can uh, maybe boot from uh, floppy on this one. Disk boot failure. Yes, and this uh, motherboard for sure doesn't have any hard drive or uh, uh, floppy drive controllers. Strange that this post analyzer card didn't work on this board. I did clean all the ISO slots with some uh, contact cleaner. And I got another uh, PC floppy drive. This for sure I know is working. Um, looks brand new. I have recently used it in another computer so um, it's gonna work if it uh, will detect it and read from it. So this is the BIOS and it looks uh, completely different. It has uh, already set up a five and a quarter inch uh, drive here. Drive B, no. Okay, let's exit and see if we can boot. Okay, I could hear a drive trying to read. It says uh, non system disk or disk error. Oh, yeah, it loads something. <laughs> Look at that. Finally, we can boot from a floppy disk. <laughs> so uh, the first disk was obviously bad. So yeah, it's set up for a CD ROM device. No drives found. So there we go. Booted from a floppy drive. Next thing I'm going to do is actually to uh, just test the other two floppy drives just to make sure and check if they are working or not. Yes, obviously with, uh, without a clock battery and uh, the BIOS battery it's going to clear its settings all the time. Uh, so I actually need to find a replacement for that uh, Dallas chip and I actually found they're selling them quite cheaply on eBay. No, I couldn't get that second drive to boot. Uh, well, I'm not really sure if it's really is a floppy disk drive. It could be for the Amiga, but uh, no, I'm testing this one. Let's see F1. Same there, boot failure. Hmm. Well, let's see if it will boot from uh, the hard drive. I have uh, inserted the correct uh, parameters into the BIOS. Yeah, booting straight away. Without the battery, this uh, motherboard is kind of useless. You have to enter the, <laughs> the parameters in the BIOS every time you turn on the machine. So I looked around a little bit and there is a trick to get uh, such a Dallas module to work again by replacing the battery. Yeah, I found a game on that hard drive. It's uh, Tetris. <laughs> So actually this hard drive is some, it's some old drive I bought from someone else. I'm not really sure what's on it. Super Tetris for sure. Oh, it's kind of fast. <laughs> I think uh, this machine is too fast. <laughs> oh yeah, it actually has Windows uh, 3.11. <laughs> 
That's kind of cool. Okay, then it's easier to uh, test out other stuff. Seems like I have been inside here and uh, fiddled around. Obviously, I don't have a mouse. Kind of cool, yeah. This motherboard probably requires a serial mouse. Um, not really sure if I have one, but at least I have this controller card which has a serial port, so I um, should be able to run a serial mouse then. So now it actually started to get a little bit more fun. I probably need a heatsink on the CPU. It's quite warm if I, <laughs> I'm gonna run this for some time. So this is the Dallas chip, the Dallas real-time chip. And the uh, thing is, it has uh, some electronics there to keep um, the time. And it also has a built-in battery in it. And it's all encased into this uh, blob of epoxy, I think, or plastic. Actually gonna order one, uh, same type, it's uh, 1287. But I found a trick, you can actually modify this. And uh, if you want to use a battery like this, you can actually just uh, solder it in. But before you do that, you need to disconnect um, the battery terminals uh, that goes in to the motherboard and connect it to this. So I thought I'm gonna try to do that now. I'm first just gonna solder out the, the Dallas chip. All right, that uh, is sturdy soldering. Yeah, just bend it so it stays in place. All right, so uh, now this goes um, like this. Time to test. I have uh, hooked up uh, the board, but without um, the real-time clock module. Let's see what happens then first. Yeah, we get nothing at all. Yeah, now it boots. Nice. I took out the, the hard drive controller card and uh, yeah. Let's see now if it uh, actually stores the values. It should present an error message that the battery was not uh, found. Uh, yeah. Now we're in the BIOS. Uh, let's set uh, the date and uh, clock. And it's uh, 144 and it was uh, hard drive um, 49 and I just enter the parameters F10 exit now let's see if it uh, stores that let's go into the BIOS um, let me actually just um, turn it off completely then turn it on control alt escape Yes, look at that, it saved it. Fantastic. <laughs> so, that worked. Now oh, it boots from the hard drive. Yes, that worked. All right, it's been a couple of days. I actually been doing something else. I actually made another video and <laughs> now I thought I'll continue with this one. However, I <laughs> kind of forgot what I was gonna do next. Uh, but in the meantime, I got this one. It's a Pentium uh, Socket 5 microprocessor that we can test with the other motherboard that I couldn't actually test. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Yeah, I removed the other board and now we have this one and uh, the empty socket. Now we should be able to populate that. Just need to make sure all the pins look straight. And uh, yeah, they look and uh, there's pin one in that corner it has a white dot and there's a, a corner there that matches with that so yeah it's in then of course we need some ram this seems to be like 72 pin sim ram need to find some of those now with all these old motherboards um, i should actually uh, get a few cabinets so that I can build up uh, working machines from this. 
Hopefully it will work with only two um, RAM sticks. I only got two of those. Now this motherboard already have a battery. It's probably a dead battery. So this one has the clock circuitry and stuff uh, on the board itself and not that Dallas real-time clock chip. Just gonna take out this battery and see if there's any life in it. No, it was completely empty. And this one is a new one, uh, 3 volts. Now this board uh, has built-in floppy and hard drive controllers. And uh, there's a floppy drive connector and that's the hard drives. It does not have a built-in uh, video card. So yeah, I'm gonna use the same ISA video card. Uh, I'll check if I find a PCI variant, maybe a little bit faster I can use uh, afterwards. Okay, everything's hooked up now. Let's see, does this work? Mm, no signal. Okay, then we need to try the post uh, card. And this card is for both the PCI and um, the ISO slot. Let's see now. At least it has some voltages and uh, yeah, but uh, no post codes. Yeah, I moved the card to the ISO slot and it's the same. It has uh, the required voltages, but uh, nothing much else. CPU is getting quite hot quite fast, but I'm not really sure if that's normal. No, one of the probable causes that uh, this doesn't uh, post is probably because it's configured for another CPU. And if you have configured for another bus speed, um, then it might not post at all, as I understand it. Uh, so I actually googled um, the number here and I found a piece of a manual for this and it says for a Pentium 75 you should set uh, this uh, switch here accordingly. So here it says um, Pentium 75 switch 6 should be off, 7 on, switch 8 should be off. Yes and look at that all three pins are um, on so yeah according to the table that's either a 133 megahertz or a 166 megahertz so it should be uh, off on off okay let's try that then yes yes it posts yeah okay so that was it yeah and there you have it on the screen ami bios keyboard not detected it's in no, I have both the hard drive and the floppy drive disconnected, so it doesn't detect the keyboard. I'm pressing Control Alt Delete. Hmm, keyboard is connected, and we know that it works because we used it on uh, the other machine. And that was eight megabytes of RAM. Okay, I'm gonna try to figure out why it doesn't uh, detect the keyboard. So this BIOS actually seems to be able to auto-detect the hard drive uh, because it actually found it and boot it into MS-DOS. However, with no working keyboard, um, I couldn't figure out what's wrong with that. There's not much we can do. I mean, it seems to be uh, just a regular old uh, keyboard connector. <laughs> However, <laughs> I can't be sure. Is it? I mean, there's no lights uh, in the keyboard or anything. So either it's not the keyboard connector or it's not working. So if you have an idea about this keyboard connector and why it doesn't work, then just write it in the comments below. Anyway, my goal here was to check out this motherboard and it is somewhat working and needs a little bit more testing, but uh, yeah, partly working. I just make a note about the non-working keyboard. And the connector seems a little bit loose, but um, yeah, I checked the solder joints on the other side and they seem okay, but maybe there's something wrong with the connector itself. So a little bit back and forth in this video, hope that's okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I can't come to a resolution on everything. It's uh, too time consuming. I just want to go through things and see the state of things. A couple of more things I got. I have this, was also in the box. 
looks to be a phone, a modem card. It says line. Uh, if I uh, ever would like to hook up a <laughs> dial up modem, I have that. Uh, I have this one, uh, Etherlink 3. It's a network card, the old type with the, what's it called? BNC. Uh, no RJ45 connector there from 3Com. It's TCP IP boot PROM. Yeah, so that's one of the old types of uh, network cards. Says here, uh, copyright 1992. Yeah, let's take a closer look here. Some kind of German brand, uh, Köppen EDV 3C509. Then I have this strange card. Looks like a lot of memory chips. Um, Korea and uh, there's 16 there and 16 there, so 32 in total. Uh, yeah, some kind of connector there. I'm not really sure what this is for. If any of you guys know what this is for, then please uh, write it in the comments. It says here ND and that I think is uh, Norsk Data. It's an old Norwegian company that made um, computers and stuff back in the day. I'm gonna see if I can find anything about this card online. Also in the box uh, there's a CD-ROM drive. Sony. It's a CD-R rewritable drive unit. Nothing much to say about that. And Here's another one. This is a Mitsumi CD-ROM drive, so only CD read and it says 8x. I am uh, near the end of <laughs> the box. Here's another um, audio card and uh, yeah, this one has uh, also, I don't know, it says mid-e. Does it mean midi? And this is a game controller um, port. And it's actually two cards. It says analog devices sound port there. But uh, I'm not really sure what kind of card this is. If it's uh, sound blaster compatible or something else. It actually has this uh, add-on card here. Yeah, and it seems like it has built-in controllers for um, different types of CD-ROM drives. It says Pana there, probably Panasonic. Mitu, is that Mitsumi, Sony, uh, PC speaker, CD-ROM input, also Panasonic, Sony, Sony Mitsumi, uh, made in Taiwan. And here's some mic in, volume control, line in, line out, and there's even a phone. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of interesting stuff here that uh, I need a lot more time to <laughs> get around and um, check out in some uh, organized way. So this was just to show you what I got here. <laughs> I know everything is in a mess. I need to put it back into its uh, box and try to uh, make some notes about things. Yeah, I also got a bunch of mice dirty looking, cheap looking uh, mice. Yeah, not much to say about those. All right, that was a lot of uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, sorry about the little bit unstructured content here, but uh, that's how it is sometimes <laughs> when you dive into some uh, unknown territory and uh, don't know a lot about stuff. At least it shows that there's a lot of uh, new things I can play around with when I get the time to come around it. Anyway, I just want to say thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and a special thanks to my patrons. See you next time. Bye bye.